Hi folks, Dr. Dicek. It is Wednesday, July 29th. Uh, tomorrow is uh, the observance of Tish above. Tonight is, as you know, a fast. Uh, just a quick word, I did speak to my postsake, uh, Rob David Cohn, uh, yesterday uh, regarding a few questions that came up around fasting. There was one question of uh, a high-risk individual who is currently significantly exposed in a very close contact who's within his 14-day uh, incubation period. So the question is, does that individual have to fast on Tisha B'Av or David uh, Paskin that in fact he does not, uh, he is not obligated to fast, nor should he fast. Uh, the reason being that uh, you want to keep your uh, immune system as functional as possible to fight off any incubating infection, especially such a serious one as COVID. So he Paskin that that individual is not obligated to fast. Uh, another question uh, came up today, uh, whether an individual who is actually uh, ongoing now with a recent COVID infection, in other words, they were diagnosed recently, uh, and do they need to fast as well? And the answer was no, if they are uh, in, in the midst of a COVID infection because of the se potential severity of the infection, they do not have to fast as well. That is the psaac that came uh, from many of the Rabbanim in Eretz Yisrael as well. Uh, so uh, if there's a question about your fasting, please consult your rabbi. Uh, I'm sure that most rabbis will have uh, different perspectives on it. I'm just repeating uh, the perspective that was given over to me uh, uh, based on a question that I posed to Harav David Kohn uh, yesterday. Um, we're going to cover a study today, which I think has tremendous importance for many of us. Uh, there was a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, based on uh, a uh, study of 100 uh, COVID patients in Frankfurt, Germany, and University Hospital in Frankfurt. And what the question of the study was is whether COVID causes injury to the heart uh, and to what degree and how can it be evaluated and what's the follow-up. So they studied 100 patients in their cohort group in this uh, University of Frankfurt study. 67% uh, of those patients uh, had suffered COVID infections and remained at home. 33% were hospitalized. Uh, they measured a, a protein which is typically measured in the emergency room called troponin. Troponin is a protein that's found in skeletal and uh, muscle fibers of the heart, uh, which uh, in the case of the heart, it detects cardiac injury. So when a person shows up with a possible heart attack in, in the emergency department, one of the tests done to detect a heart attack is called a troponin test. In fact, they do serial troponins over a period of hours to see if somebody is having a heart attack. So this study looked at the troponin levels initially uh, throughout the illness in uh, with these 100 COVID patients, these were adults, uh, and they detected elevated troponin levels in 71 out of 100 of these patients. Uh, that's 71% of adults with COVID had detectable troponin levels. Uh, and in fact, in 5%, they had very high troponin levels showing some significant cardiac injury. Um, the majority of these patients on, when they did echocardiograms, looking at their heart function, uh, the majority of the 100 patients, in fact, had a lower left ventricular ejection fraction. That means uh, the heart was not functioning as well as it normally functions. Uh, what they did in follow-up with these patients was they did the equivalent of an MRI, a cardiac MRI or CMR. And interestingly enough, they found consistent with the troponin level study part of um, observation, 78% uh, or 78 of the 100 individuals had abnormal findings of the myocardial tissue based on the MRI, uh, and 60% of them had ongoing myocardial inflammation, uh, independent of any pre-existing condition, independent of the severity of illness, uh, independent of the overall course of the acute COVID illness. So. Uh, basically, the finding found that there was cardiac injury in 78%, uh, three-quarters of these COVID patients who didn't look terribly sick, at least the majority of them, in fact, had findings consistent with cardiac injury. Uh, what does that mean? It's, again, a point that I've brought up many times. We don't yet understand everything about this disease. In fact, we don't understand much about this disease six months in. We're learning every day, as we've talked about on this forum many times. So the important message is, if you had a COVID infection, certainly if you have any underlying cardiac condition, 
Um, you need to follow up with a cardiologist on a regular basis, let them know that you had COVID. Uh, they should be doing at least an echocardiogram to look at your left ventricular ejection fraction. Uh, and you should be monitored over a period of time to make sure that your heart is healthy and safe in the coming years. So it's a very important study. Uh, it needs to be expanded on 100 patients, does not change management for any disease, but certainly it's a clue to how we move forward and how we manage COVID patients in the future. Um, today in my office, we had actually a record for our office. As you know, we do the SOFIA rapid antigen test. Today we had four positives. We've never had four positives uh, throughout my entire uh, experience throughout the last uh, five months. Uh, certainly since we've been testing in the last five, six weeks, this is the first time we've had four positives in a day. Uh, they all originated, we don't know if it originated in the person, but uh, there were uh, three of the contacts, three of the positives were people who worked in the same office together. One of them was a family member contact. So from one case, we see that there were four uh, that we now know uh, developed a COVID infection over a short period of time. Uh, that is troubling. Uh, and it's something that we need to be aware of that, unfortunately, there is community spread going on in many communities now. Uh, we are hearing stories of kids coming back from summer camps now during the, in between the two sessions where there might have been some exposures in camp. Certainly, that needs to be addressed. I think all kids coming back from summer camp, if there were individuals that they were in close contact with in camp who might have had COVID, need to be tested upon arrival home and if necessary, isolated so uh, they don't infect others. Uh, today was a, a very bad day in terms of the statistics. Uh, unfortunately, the United States uh, exceeded over 150,000 deaths today from COVID since the start of this issue. Uh, that means the United States leads the world, not only in the number of cases, but in the number of fatalities, unfortunately. Uh, California, Florida, and Texas, the seven-day average number of deaths or death toll exceeded the previous 14-day average, which is not a good thing. Uh, Arizona, on the other hand, the seven-day death toll average was less than the previous 14 days, which is a good thing. Uh, Florida, for instance, just to show you the impact, Florida had over 200 deaths yesterday. I think it was 207 deaths, which is catastrophic in my view. Um, I'm going to read to you a quick quote before finishing up. Um, from one of the uh, articles in lay literature, it just said the tragic loss of life from COVID is staggering. It's like losing a uh, 150,000 deaths is literally the equivalent of losing a medium sized city in the United States. That's how you can envision the number of deaths so far. Um, so uh, the same article pointed out to a very good thing. It said, uh, what should this tragic loss of life, 150,000 deaths, what should that remind us of? And it should remind us of two things, how to protect myself, how do I protect myself, and how do I protect others? And there's only one way to answer those two questions. How do I protect myself, and how do I protect others, is by wearing a mask. That is the only tool we have right now to prevent further catastrophes. Whether you believe you were infected in the past, whether you believe you weren't infected in the past, it doesn't matter. Everybody must wear a mask at this point in the United States. We have to slow down this virus and there's only one way to starve this virus it's by wearing a mask right now so please i'm encouraging everybody every time you leave your home put on a mask uh, if you're going to be in an indoor setting with other people around nearby wear a mask social distance wash your hands but most importantly please please wear a mask protect everybody and protect yourself uh, we'll touch base again if not tomorrow on friday tomorrow is the observance of tish above um, uh, we will uh, see how it goes tomorrow and I wish everybody a good fast for those of you who are fasting uh, and a meaningful fast and hopefully we'll uh, get through this very very terrible um, time together and Tisha B'Av will finish up in an uplifting way to give us hope for the future and I think there is very good hope for the future once we get through this crisis. Have a wonderful day. Take care.